Hello, this is the fourth and final part of the first lecture on general topology. And in the previous portion, we talked about interior, exterior, and boundary points of a set. And since those ideas are so important, we're going to review them quickly. So first, a point P in a set L, which is a subset of our topological space X, is interior to L if P has an open neighborhood, which is completely inside of L. Um, a point P in L complement is exterior to L if P has an open neighborhood of L complement. So those two ideas are kind of representing a point being really inside the set or really outside the set. Because if everything around it is inside the set, well, it's very much inside the set. And that's kind of the idea for those two. The third one is P is a boundary point of L if every open neighborhood of P contains points of L and L complement. So if you have this, if you have a point uh, on a set, every open neighborhood around it has a point that's in it, in our set and outside of our set. And so we can, as we saw last time, we can kind of look at the interior, exterior, and boundary points of this set as a whole. So for instance, let's take L as the example we did last time, which was 3 to 4, 4 closed, and then set union with 7 to 9. And here, the interior points are from 3 to 4 and 7 to 9 exclusive. And you can see this because, again, if we take, say, 3 to 4 and we take a point uh, inside, there's always some small area around it that's completely within our set. It may be very small, depending on how close it is to the boundary, but there is always one of them. Next, the exterior points is from negative infinity to 3, 4 to 7, and 9 to, uh, to infinity. But you can see that by, if you take, say, 5, which is between 4 and 7, there's a small area that's completely outside of our set L, original set L. And then the boundary points are exactly what you would expect for this one. 3, 4, 7, and 9. The endpoints of these, of these intervals. So we can consider L complement um, just as we can consider L, but we're, we'll do it separately here. So L complement, just set, just everything that is not in L, negative infinity to 3, 3 to 7, 9 to infinity with appropriate open and closed boundaries. Now, the interior points here are from negative infinity to 3, 4 to 7, and 9 to infinity, which you can see just the same way we did the other one. Now, if you look, the exterior of the set is the interior of the complement, which makes sense by these two definitions if you look at them. Um, the exterior points, again, are the interior points of our original set, so 3 to 4 and 7 to 9. Notice, though, that the boundary points are exactly the same, because it doesn't matter which one we're considering, because the complement of a complement is the original set, if you want to think of it that way. Um, but just because the boundary points of the inside and outside are their boundary for both, that's kind of the whole idea. All right, now I'm going to go over an example, two examples, where things are not quite as clear-cut or as easy or as intuitive as this one was. Um, and we're going to take it over our, our nice standard topology for this first example. Standard topology on R. So just the real number line like we've been doing, along with uh, the standard topology. So just open intervals and unions of open intervals being our open sets. So, okay, x is R. And we're going to let our set L be rational numbers. Perfectly valid set. We can talk about interior, exterior, and boundary. So let's talk about interior points. So what is an interior point? Well, it has to be in the set, so it's going to be a rational number. So let's take a rational number. Let's say 2 just to start out uh, to think about. Well, in any area around 2, we know that there is an irrational number, right? So that means 
you can't, uh, you can't come up with a small enough interval that it's all rational inside of it. And so there are no interior points of, uh, of the rational numbers. If we take exterior points, we can see it's going to act the same way. So if instead of 2, we took, say, pi, any area around pi is going to have some rational number, some decimal, say 3.14, which is rational, or something even closer if the interval is very small. And so for the same reason that there was no interior points, nothing is exterior as well. That's really weird, right? Well, OK. So let's look at the boundary points. So the boundary points, well, it kind of makes sense that it should be everything else, right? And let's see that. We take any point, and it always is going to have both um, things in L and L complement, i.e., every interval has something that is both uh, rational and irrational inside of it, no matter what. And so the boundary points actually end up being all of R. Note this is completely different than what, uh, than what we were doing before with those intervals. You have to be careful and actually check if something is interior, exterior, and boundary. You can't just try to use your intuition. Your intuition can be valuable, but it's, you have to be careful with it. And this example was a little weird. The next example will be even more weird. So we're going to continue working on the real line. But we're going to use a different topology, which we can do. So we're still going to have, uh, we're going to do something called the B topology. So I'm going to explain what the B topology is first. X, we're just going to have as any set. So our space, our topological space, is just some set X. I don't really care what it is for right now. And then B will let be a subset of x, whatever subset we pick, uh, choose to pick. Now, for our topology, we'll have our topology S, our collection of open sets, to be all subsets of B. And then in order to fill those axioms, we'll also have the empty set, which was already included, but and all of x. So let's check to see if this is, in fact, a topology. We, if we take any unions of these, any union of subsets of B is still a subset of B. We're not going to magically pick up something outside of B. And finite intersections of these are clearly also going to be subsets of B, or everything or nothing again. And so we're good there as well. And then everything, um, X, and the empty set are inside our topology. So that's the three axioms of a topological space. So we're good there. So this, you can kind of think of this as the discrete topology on B, only kind of inside are a bigger set. Right? We talked about the discrete topology, the set of all subsets. Um, and so weird things can happen with this topology, as we're going to see in just a second. So let's take a specific example of this. We're going to let x, as I hinted earlier, be the real numbers. OK, perfectly good. We'll let b be the rational numbers. So what this means is, by our definition for this topology, we have that all sets of rational points are open. So any set of rational points, the set 2 is open, the set 6 is open. Um, but any set with ra irrational points, if it isn't the entirety of x, is not an open set. So let's, let's uh, cook up a specific L. Let's say L is 2 to pi, 2 open, or 2 close pi open. So let's consider what happens here. Let's look at the interior, exterior, and boundary points of this set. So the interior points first. So let's consider a rational point inside this set. Say 2. 2 is an open set, just the set of 2 itself, because it's a set of rational points, i.e. a subset of B. 
And so any rational point between 2 and pi is going to be an interior point. So we have L intersect with the rational numbers is our interior point. OK, let's look, consider exterior points. So for the exterior points, let's consider the rational points outside. Again, any rational point ha is of itself an open neighborhood of that point. And so say, for instance, 0 is the open neighborhood of 0. And so anything that's outside our set is really outside our set, any rational point. And so L, or so exterior points is our complement intersect the rational numbers again. Now notice I haven't talked anything about irrational numbers. And so technically, yes, they could be interior or exterior points. But let's actually talk about them. And you'll see that they're not. So let's consider the boundary points. So let's say we have an irrational point. Say, here's a. 2 to pi, right? If we take pi, well, the only open set that contains pi, as I mentioned earlier, is all of R, all, you know, x, our entire set, because of our definition here. And so any irrational point is only, or is only in the open set R, and so it, of course, R has things in L and outside of L. And so this definition is fulfilled. Every neighborhood of P, i.e., I, the only neighborhood of P, contains points of L and L complement. So the boundary point is all irrational numbers. So this is odd. This is not what we're, expect, what we're expecting and what we're used to, right? The rational numbers where the boundary was everything kind of makes sense because, you know, it's dense, right? It's, there's a whole lot of them everywhere, and so you can kind of expect that the boundary could, okay, maybe it could be everything. But this is really weird because, again, if we take 2 to pi, right, we think that this point over here, say, pi plus 2, which is an irrational number, right? You'd think, well, there's this distance here. It couldn't possibly be a boundary point. They're so far away from the set. This is why you have to be careful when you're dealing with what is in an open neighborhood and what isn't in an open neighborhood and what the interior points and exterior points and boundary points are. Is because just because you're intuitively, oh, it's, it couldn't possibly be a boundary, it's not necessarily true. Pi plus 2 is a boundary point of 2 to pi. And so this is, this is, our, uh, this is the end of the examples. And we've talked about this kind of decomposition into interior points, exterior points, and boundary points of a set. And now that we've done that, in the next lecture, we're going to talk about that de decomposition a bit more. Thank you.